the topic for today is uh, youth and digitalization and you know basically around the context of COVID, how it has impacted and how the learning has changed. So we will hear from all our panel members, their different points of views. Um, yeah, and this is the main, uh, you know, the topic for today's discussion. So with that, now I move to our panel members. I request the panel members to please provide their introduction and slightly touching upon their current experience and expertise around, you know, how they have contributed to youth and uh, digitalization process. My name is uh, Sushil Shrestha. Uh, I am from Kathmandu University. Uh, I work as an assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering. And we have one uh, research lab called Digital Learning Research Lab, where we do several research on online learning system. So I recently completed my PhD in learning analytics, which is related to online system. And besides that, uh, I'm also the associate director of Eastern Welfare Directorate of Kathmandu University. Basically, uh, regarding this digitization, uh, I did my master's thesis and also the PhD in digitization. So uh, my PhD was uh, focused on how we can develop a learning design, which will help to uh, provide a suitable content, especially in the, in the field of uh, online learning. We all know that uh, after this post-COVID, we're having a challenge on applying suitable ICT tools in our education. So my research lab is focused on developing a learning management system we are recently building a personalized learning system to provide suitable content to the different types of students. Thank you. Uh, now we'll slightly enter into a more pedagogy um, logic, you know, like how it has, the COVID has impacted the teaching methodologies, uh, not just at, you know, schools level, but also at the university level. So we have Sushil Ji here in our audience. So I'll request Sushil Ji, uh, given your education background, can you uh, give us, uh, share us your example and experience how the COVID has impacted or changed your teaching style? Yeah, uh, thank you. I think, uh, first of all, we need to understand the difference between digitization and digitalization. So uh, digitization basically means uh, making digital content or converting from analog to digital. But digitalization is more challenging, I think, because it addresses the need of the user, like how you are going to provide the suitable ICT tools to achieve the goal. We have many options. And uh, this recent uh, COVID has created this problem in our country. Like the, there are, for a long time, uh, we were far from the education because we were not digitally ready, uh, even the instructor as well as the students. So after a long gap, uh, basically we adapted the online education. And especially in uh, government school, uh, I find uh, teachers, uh, they were struggling with the adaptation of ICT tools. Uh, I myself was also involved in several trainings. So this is a big challenge for our country. So, but we don't have any other option now because this COVID can come anytime. So it is unexpected. So we have to be digitally ready. So it's a big challenge uh, in our country. Uh, so as far as my uh, background is concerned, so I was focused on developing the structural design, like what sort of pedagogy is relevant in online education. So I was uh, working uh, in that area uh, since last five years, and uh, we developed a MOOC system in Nepal. So MOOC is very popular. Uh, we all know, I think, about the MOOC, but uh, we developed our own MOOC system, uh, uh, realizing that one day we have to move towards virtual university. So the COVID has uh, created that opportunity. What we thought long time back was uh, come into reality due to this COVID. And uh, from MOOC, we were able to aware uh, like what sort of teaching style we should add up developing the instructional design. And coming back to now the existing current scenario, uh, I think there is a big challenge to the instructor as well as the student also like the instructor are not aware or they are fe uh, they are feeling very hard on how to develop the content to teach to students and students also they are not very much aware with the ICT tools and this uh, learning through zoom or google meet it is very difficult to sit in a same place for two three hours it is not uh, easy 
to sit uh, for a long online class. Especially this has hampered uh, the small children most. So uh, what I did is uh, my research lab is now currently working on uh, developing a personalized system. So what this personalized system means is uh, we are trying to develop an adaptive content which will focus the need of diversified students. Like I think here most of us are students. So we don't have the same learning style. For example, some may prefer audio content, but some may prefer video content. Some prefer to read by slide. Some prefer to read by even uh, book offline. So we cannot provide the same content to these diverse students. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to develop the adaptive system, which will analyze the user behavior, what sort of uh, teaching style, what sort of learning style they prefer, and we will provide the content according to their need. So I think this is the future. And, uh, and the next thing is we need to first make our instructor uh, digitally adaptable. If your instructor are not digitally adaptable, if they are not friendly with the system, they cannot teach in a better way. So uh, some initiative has been done by the government but I think uh, we need to develop um, more learning management system like uh, my second teaser and then even I think Fuse Classroom. So those are some of the examples. But uh, for higher education, we need to develop some kind of adaptive system. So we cannot develop a same system and then uh, deliver to different levels of student. So the most um, major focus has to be in the asynchronous content so that uh, the student can uh, read the content uh, in their preferred time. And we need to adapt the concept of flipped classroom. So we cannot just ask the student to sit for two, three hours in online. It is not easy. Even for instructor, it is very difficult. So we need to move towards a flipped classroom, flipped learning concept, and as, as well as developing the asynchronous content. So if we do this sort of things, then I think uh, we will be ready slowly on the future of creating a blended learning approach and even virtual university, if this COVID comes again and again. Um, so thank, Senji, you. thank you so much. I'm, I might just ask you one question about your uh, the personalized learning system you said. Have you tested out that system and have you checked the responses? Yes, uh, we recently developed uh, our own system and then we did uh, the usability analysis of the system. And uh, we, uh, we did the experiment, experiment of the student who used the normal Moodle system and our customized system. And we did the usability survey, which shows that students were more satisfied with the type of content we have been providing. And even uh, we have implemented the uh, approach of gamification, right? For example, if you are more active in the system, then you will get more point. What we are trying to do is, we are trying to develop the motivation among the students. We are not forcing them to use our system. So we are also integrating some gamified elements. So through gamified elements, what it will create is, it will create the motivation, it will create the self-awareness, it will create the, increase the user interest among the system. So we are trying these sort of things and the result has been quite impressive. And uh, I have been testing this with my system, my uh, uh, students who are using my system and they are very much satisfied. Uh, even now they are asking is, sorry, only you are using this system. Well, why not you spread this system <laughs> and give training to other uh, places also? So the response has been quite good and we're really trying hard to develop the customized system with focus to the users. Um, or the so Thank, Sergei, you. Thank you so much. We are almost at the time, so maybe if there is uh, any important question other than what has already been asked. Yes, so we'll take one last question. So uh, my mommy is a teacher in a government school in Kathmandu. Uh, so when Amji said, um, leaving Kathmandu aside, uh, other the schools and education institutes uh, in other countries are in other parts of Nepal are in a very vulnerable situation when it comes to e-learning. So uh, I live in Naikap, which is um, inside the valley, of course, and she teaches uh, social studies and economics. And during the eight months of the uh, pandemic, the first one, the first lockdown, uh, the total number of students in her class were 30, but only six to seven 
were present throughout the eight months. Uh, so my question to Aminji and Sushilji, because uh, you both have been working in the uh, educational field. So uh, can you give me any examples of any educational institutes uh, which have better handled the situation? So the situation of the number of attendees in online classes in government school in Kashmandu and other parts of Nepal were definitely very, very low. So any examples and um, do you have any idea of what the government is doing? So let's say if we are anticipating another phase of lockdown soon. So is the situation of education, um, e-learning going to be the same or has there been any changes? Do you have any idea, examples, anything? Uh, Sushinji, would you like to respond? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for your good question. Uh, one thing, uh, our un our country is uh, very diverse, you know. Uh, when you see our seven provinces, they are not equally developed. So uh, what should we do? In my opinion is we cannot adopt the same strategy in all the provinces. For example, while I was giving training to the head teachers in one of the training, one lady head teacher told me that uh, she was from Karnali province. So your training is useful, but how I'm going to implement? I have no internet facility. So in that case, uh, we cannot adapt the same strategy. So what should we do is, if we have a no internet facility, then we have to provide education through radio or television. If we have poor internet facility, then we can provide the content through pen drive or some other devices. If we have a good internet facility, like in Kathmandu or some major cities, we can provide through Google Meet and Zoom. So what I'm going to say is uh, we have to plan a different strategy on how we are going to deal with the online education in different provinces. That's my first point. And the next, uh, next regarding the attendance is a big problem, yes. Because instructor has been teaching, but uh, it is very difficult for students to uh, sit in a classroom for a long time, as well as they have a very poor internet connectivity. So they have a fluctuation uh, many times during the lecture. So for that reason, uh, I mentioned about asynchronous content. So what asynchronous content is, you can develop your content because uh, most of the head teachers, most of the teachers have a smartphone. Uh, buying a smartphone is not a big uh, thing nowadays. So you can develop your presentation using uh, even PowerPoint and you can upload those videos in a YouTube channel or you can share that uh, your slide or the content through some uh, group uh, in that way, what the students can do is, if they are having internet problem in the during the classroom, they can read, they can go through that lecture uh, in their other preferred time. Uh, maybe some going to some places where they have internet. So uh, we need to promote uh, the uh, content. For example, this panel has been recorded. So all the uh, interested are not able to come here. So now what, when this uh, panel is, uh, session is uploaded in YouTube, then it can be uh, listened by a large audience. So in that way, we need to record our content and provide, especially in the, in the country like ours. Thank you. Uh, so Zizi, thank you so much. I think uh, for also giving us some real time example from of the current uh, discussions. I think I hope Paramitaji that answers uh, your question. I think uh, the response to that would be like you know we do need a larger government co commitment to you know as he said like you know we need different strategy to address uh, different parts of the country and these uh, issue. Uh, although you talked about something very close to home and that is a reality, uh, but I think it's a continuous work in progress. Uh,